So our Lenten journey in which we talk about the God story and how our story connects with that, we take as our theme something G.K. Chesterton said, crusty old English uh, Christian writer about 100 years ago. He said, I always felt life first as a story. And if there is a story, there is a storyteller. Our scripture reading today is kind of like the introduction to a book or a story. From Genesis we read, In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude, and on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let us pray. Lord, may this day be for us Sabbath. May we in you and in your word find true rest. Amen. So life is a story, and if there is a story, there is a storyteller. We each have our own unique stories. We know the cast of characters, we know the crucial turning points, we know dramatic moments where everything hung in the balance. We know where we have had triumphs and also defeats and difficulties. In fact, it's in the sharing of stories that we have a sh begin to have a sense of who we are. Fellow United Methodist pastor Jacob Armstrong says this about coming into a sense of the story of his life. He said, I remember a conversation I had with my father when I was eight or nine years old. We were sitting on these rocking chairs on our front porch, and I remember it because we didn't often sit on the front porch. On this day, it was just me and dad, and I had been trying to find the courage to tell my dad something that I thought he would tell me was foolish or childish. I mustered up the courage to tell him something that I thought made me weird, something that I never would have told my friends. I figured he would tell me how to stop it, how to grow up. Dad, I feel like my life is a movie or a great story. I pretend a lot. 
I pretend that I am the hero of my story and there are bad guys and good guys, and I fight for the good, go good side, of course, even at school or Cub Scouts or wherever. I'm pretending it is part of my adventure, my story, of which I am the star. I didn't tell him anything about my thoughts of dam damsels in distress or my deep fear of the enemy. I didn't tell him everything. I told him a little and waited for him to reason with me. I waited for him to share logic with me to help me get, get out of my fairy tale. Here Jacob Armstrong said, I looked over at my dad and he sat there looking out over the field and he said, yeah, me too. We live by our stories and within the story that we sense taking shape within us. Growing up, I, I really relished the Chronicles of Narnia stories. Anybody ever read those? C.S. Lewis? Great stories. A little later on, then, it was the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This was way before the movie came out. But, you know, in that story, we have two hobbits that are on this incredible journey, and it already seems difficult enough traveling with this wizard named Gandalf, but then he disappears when they're in the middle of a dangerous, dark mine. And Sam says to Frodo, I wonder what sort of a tale we have fallen into. It, it's a great question. And it's really a question we probably ask ourselves at, at certain points. Wow, what kind of a story have I fallen into? What kind of a tale have I fallen into? It's really what the Bible is all about. About this people that found themselves caught up in a story that was bigger than they were, that led them to places they wouldn't have gone to otherwise, that led them to do things they would not have done on their own. That was the people of Israel, and over time we find that somebody formed in that tradition named Jesus also had some amazing stories. And it's in our following of that Jesus that we find our stories taking shape. The last number of years, there's been uh, some real interest in stories. I, I note that in the counseling community, there, there is something called narrative therapy in which people who help folks kind of get their lives back on track notice that when people fall into great anxiety or depression or dysfunction, you know, one of the key markers of that is that their life story somehow has stopped making sense. They don't have a sense that there is a bigger picture or that there is a direction, or that there's a purpose to their life's story. Some of you who are uh, new in the last few years, I, I, it occurred to me as I thought of this, that some might not know that I have had a younger brother who committed suicide. And for us as a family, that has been the the ongoing mystery of life. How is it that this family that seems to share, seem to share a pretty similar story, still there was one of us whose story got so off track. But it's a reminder to us that we live within our own unique story. For those who study theology, we notice that there is a branch of theology now called narrative theology. And this 
also looks at how in matters of faith we are not formed just by dry creeds or formulas, but by the stories that we live in and that give shape to us. So our lives are our stories. They unfold at their own pace. Sometimes it might seem a little slow. Sometimes it might seem like they're going too fast. We're not ready. Almost no matter what age we are, it seems like we're kind of in the middle. Even when we're young, we hear the stories that our parents or other relatives share and realize, oh, I'm part of something that was happening before even my own time. But we say this about our lives as a story. It's not to say that those stories are pretend. Our stories are actually something very deep that connects us with each other in some very strong and powerful ways. You know, I have the the privilege to sit and talk with families planning the the funeral or memorial service with loved ones. One of the interesting things that I've I've noted is we'll start talking about how to tell the story of a person and we'll start out uh, just with like where they were born, where, where were they in the birth order, what their parents did for a living. And next thing you know, 45 minutes has gone by because it just opens up the whole floodgates to just the whole amazing story of their life. At least that's most people. Every now and then, and luckily it's not that often, but occasionally it's happened where clearly there has been some real damage done by the deceased and where it's pretty quiet and there's not a lot of stories told. One time this happened and there was some real awkward silence, and, and the family just said, oh, pastor, you'll think of something to say. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay. I'm going to be talking about the grace of God here. But fortunately for most of us, we manage to live into at least somewhat the story that God intends for us. It's not to say that we, any of us do it perfectly or that any of us wouldn't wish there to be some better uh, material (laughs) or other cast of characters or maybe some less adversity it would seem would be good and yet so often the character of our stories comes through as people persevere through adversity, as we learn to live for something more than just the ruthless pursuit of advantage or pleasure, where, we, where we've had to learn how to make hard choices and to sacrifice, to live with discipline. All of us are living some kind of a story. And we gather as a people of faith to ask, how does our story get informed by the great storyteller and the original story former? Over these next few weeks in Lent and and into Easter, we'll look at the various parts of a story. It'll be the story of how God is at loose in the world, even to this day, calling us, forming us, cajoling, claiming. And this is 
one of our key beliefs as Christians. We believe that God is with us through the Holy Spirit, that God's Spirit continues to hover over the chaos of the world, shaping a new creation, shaping us as creatures. We believe that God is not some distant spectator, in turn amused and alarmed by what we do, but is a participant traveling with us. Now today, it might seem to be cold biscuits, as they say, as we talk about the introduction. Introduction? Really? And yet we find that most books start with an introduction in which we hear something about the intentions and the motivations of the author. Here we notice that God is the primary character. In fact, God is the author of the story of life. Somebody put it this way. God is like the author of a book, present everywhere, but visible nowhere. And so in our introduction in Genesis, we notice that God speaks the universe into being. God creates out of nothing. And God creates us in his own image. So crucial to this story is the understanding that we are not robots. We are created as freely choosing agents. In fact, beings with whom God wants to have a relationship. And so that is one of the reasons we're created in God's image and given so much authority and responsibility. So God, we believe, continues to speak us into existence. As I thought about all of this, it occurred to me that one of the things that theologians in times past used to really obsess over, it's really kind of curious how these things uh, take different prominence in different parts of history. In the Middle Ages, theologians talked a lot about the impassibility of God. We don't use that word much, impassibility. It just really means unchangingness, unchangeability of God. And now, I guess in the chaos of the Middle Ages, when there was so much insecurity and trauma and change, it was comforting for people to think that God never changed. But here's one of the things we're going to learn in this journey and that I think we learn in our story of life. That God does change because God's awareness of who we are changes as we change. And in fact, God travels with us, we believe, in the spirit so for me, it's, it's been more helpful to talk about God as the fellow sufferer who understands. And we find there a good description of who Jesus is. Jesus, who is the, the true face of God, entered into our life, had these amazing adventures, faced challenges and difficulties, suffering, betrayal, and yet, even so, lived with courage, with grace, with delight, with trust, showing that that can be our story, too. His story can be our story. So, here's an image. I think it comes from this introduction to this great story of God. It's a little something I picked up from uh, an old saying of the rabbis, and often I will share it when we're standing out in the remembrance garden getting ready to pour ashes into the ground or out at a cemetery for a committal service. 
The rabbis said, you know, we should go through life with a rock in each pocket. On the first rock have written, remember that you are but dust and ashes. And then in the other pocket have a rock that says, but God created the whole universe for you. That's the beginning of our story. That's the introduction. It's going to be a, quite a ride. Hang on. Amen.